Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 6th of June, and there are a lot of things going on in this world today, but I want to highlight in particular that today is the 76th anniversary of D-Day when my father and many other brave members of the armed forces participated in the Battle of Normandy, France, that became the turning point for victory in the European theater of World War II. Many lost their lives and were severely wounded. And I want today uh, to acknowledge and thank uh, the greatest generation. I, I agree with Tom Brokaw. America is not perfect, but we can and often do, when prompted, rise to the occasion. And I want to honor uh, those men and women uh, who participated in D-Day today 76 years ago. On the more um, pressing front, uh, we want to pray for uh, those who are in harm's way for the tropical storm Crystal Ball. Um, uh, it looks like the last track I saw um, that this storm is headed right for New Orleans, which is where Debbie and I uh, had our honeymoon. So New Orleans is one of our favorite cities. And uh, we certainly pray for all the people along the Gulf Coast uh, for their safety uh, as the storm approaches uh, the uh, southern coast of, of the United States. Well, today is Saturday the 6th of June, and we begin our morning prayer with the opening sentence from Psalm 51, uh, verse 9. Remember, Psalm 51 is the penitential psalm of David. Turn your face from my sins and blot out my misdeeds. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant to you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Jubilate, be joyful. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures from generation to generation. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 89, verses 1 through 18. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I ever be proclaiming your faithfulness from one generation to another. For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness shall be established in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Your seed will I establish forever and set up your throne from one generation to another. O Lord, the heavens will praise your wondrous works. 
and your faithfulness in the assembly of the saints. For who in the clouds can be compared unto the Lord? And who among the gods is like unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the counsels of the saints, and to be held in reverence by all those who are round about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is like you? Your faithfulness, most mighty Lord, is round about you. You rule the raging sea. You still the waves when they arise. You have subdued, subdued Rahab of the deep and destroyed her. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours. You laid the foundation of the world and all that is in it. You have made the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand and high as your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Blessed are the people, O Lord, who rejoice in you. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Their, their delight shall be in your name all the day long, and in your righteousness shall they make their boast. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor you shall lift up your might. The Lord is our defense. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 20, verses 1 through 26. One day, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, the chief priest and the scribes with the elders came up and said to him, Tell us, by what authority do you do these things, or who is it that gave you this authority? And Jesus answered them, I also will ask you a question. Now tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Or from man? And they discussed it with one another, saying, Well, if we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, all the people will stone us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants, and went to another country for a long while. But when the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants, so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant, but they also beat him and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent a third, this one also was wounded and cast out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, <coughs> What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Surely not. But Jesus looked directly at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them, but they feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies, who pretended to be sincere that they might catch him in something he said, as to deliver him to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, you, we know that you speak and teach rightly and show no partiality 
but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius. Whose likeness and inscription does it have? And they said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to catch him in what he said, but marveled at his answer. They became silent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The song of the redeemed is our canticle. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your holy and just works have been revealed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. <laughs> Let's join in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts. Help us to reflect on this day the sacrifices of brave men and women 76 years ago for the D-Day Normandy invasion, for the sacrifices of the, uh, those first responders who will be going uh, to protect lives and property uh, as the storm, tropical storm crystal ball um, descends upon the southern coast of uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, toward New Orleans. We pray for those men and women who brave the storm for the protection of others. Lord, we pray on this day also a prayer of thanksgiving for the peace that seems to have descended more uh, upon our nation, and yet also the call to not be satisfied with a temporary peace that's a band-aid but to seek changes of hearts and minds for a more permanent peace that has to be founded on Jesus Christ, for all other attempts fail. And so come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let's look at the Gospel reading today. In the Gospel reading, Jesus' authority is challenged. We're not surprised by this. He's been on a collision course uh, with the leadership uh, in Jerusalem uh, for a good while now. And this is Luke chapter 20. We know where this is going. It's going toward Calvary. And so there is a craftiness here. There's a desire not to, um, to trip Jesus up, to find some reason to find fault so that he could be turned over to the Roman governor. And that's eventually what does happen. But it's not Jesus' fault. It's those who would not believe. And so there's that question, you know, who, who, by what authority, sir, are you doing this? You know, who gave you permission? And Jesus asked them a question about John the Baptist, and they failed to respond. And that shows, us a, that shows a heart that's not open. And so Jesus' response is, then neither will I tell you by what authority. Because they're not going to... Have you ever noticed sometimes people ask you a question, they really don't care about the answer? They already know what they want. I, I sometimes wonder why they even ask. Uh, perhaps they're looking for affirmation for a belief they already have. And I know in my experience, when I don't give that affirmation, um, you can just sort of see they turn away and one more strike against me, so to speak. But that's okay. I'm seeking to please God, not, not man. And that's because that's the calling on any minister. Well, the parable of the wicked tenants is, again, underscoring and is a teaching against those people right then and there that were seeking to trip Jesus up. In fact, they, they recognize that. The scripture tells us that this morning. Uh, the example of, the, of, the, of the, the man who owned the vineyard. And remember, in the Old Testament, God often refers to Israel as his vineyard, as his bride. And Jesus picks up on that, of course, later when, uh, you know, when uh, the New Testament, uh, the, the church is the bride of Christ. 
so here the vineyard is clearly uh, the people of Israel and they're in rebellion and so three times this is the prophets these are those that God has sent to call the people back to reformation to return to their God to their Lord and of course ultimately we hear and he sends his beloved son and this is a prophecy of course because John 316 God sent his beloved son and what did they do they killed him because again a hard heart outside of the Holy Spirit acting on that heart and a heart being willing to be changed there's not much that can be done Now that doesn't mean we write people off but we need to understand that there's only so far that we could carry it and a closed hard heart if they won't listen to Jesus of course Jesus then refers to himself as the cornerstone they the one that the builders rejected those who fall upon it shall be destroyed and so now the trap is again attempted to be set by a question uh, should we pay taxes to Caesar or not this is a an invitation for rebelliousness this is an invitation to catch Jesus uh, to trap him and because he's God because he's smarter than they are because he's all-knowing his answer is uh, the perfect answer give me the money that you're asking me about whose name is on it whose inscription Caesar it's Roman money so return the Roman money back to Rome but give to God that which is God's and they know the Shema hear O Israel the Lord your God the Lord your God is one this is an echo in this hear O people God is one and we owe him 100% allegiance and it's controversial because people who get confused with nationalism I mean I'm remembering D-Day today I'm very proud of our country but I don't confuse our country with God's heavenly country our allegiance is to God first and then wherever we were born wherever we live whatever place that we're called to be citizens we need to honor as best we can where God has placed us to as a former parishioner used to say and of course this is not copyrighted to her but bloom where you're planted but remember our first allegiance is always to our Creator our maker our Redeemer our Savior well that's sort of the gospel reading for today and so there's a, a life application of course into that to, to recognize Jesus as the second person of the Trinity to recognize our allegiance to God and to quite frankly not have hardened hearts well, we won't listen well, part, of, part of my greatest frustration in the social setting for today is how people are not listening they hear just enough to trigger an automated response and at that point conversation shuts down and we get into the either you're against me or you're for me or you're, you're it's 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 really sad uh, to watch and participate as a as a minister you, you know we're given charge over our congregation and so there's that sense of um, being the father of the church and one of the things that I have encountered already is we are dealing with this crisis of our country and this great opportunity for reconciliation that if I say something about racism well then others will say well why aren't you saying something about this over here and it reminds me a bit of something in fatherhood if you've ever had more than one child or more than one person that you're responsible for if a child is in, injured and you're the parent you immediately rush over to take care of that child that that injured child becomes your first priority and, and you focus your attention on that injured child is it really appropriate for the other children to then say you don't love us you don't care about us you, you, you you're spending all your time no our country right now is an injured country with injuries that go back since the very founding and even before the founding of our country racism has always been with us 
as human beings. It, it comes from the fall. It comes from sin. Violence. Remember in Genesis, Cain and Abel? We as Christians need to call constantly each other to be reminded of the importance, the infinite value of every human life and potential life and at end of life, that value that every single human being has. And in doing so, we need to preach and be living uh, choices that are pro-life, if you will. Anti-violence. Our own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was tor arrested, tortured, crucified, died at the hands of violent men. So we should never condone violence, but in that fight against violence and racism, that doesn't mean, and this is my frustration with our society, that doesn't mean that all police officers are bad, all law enforcement are, are evil, no, not in the least bit. We need to address the root causes and not be distracted by those things that, quite frankly, Satan would use to keep us from dealing with the real issues. Now, dealing with the real issues is difficult, but not impossible with God's help. We're not going to make a perfect world here. It's going to take Christ's return. But remember, you and I are little Christ. And wherever we go, we should bring Christ with us. So hug a law enforcement officer. Well, maybe not today in COVID-19, but you know, hug each other, at least in our minds and our thoughts. Value each other. And quite frankly, one of the greatest values that a human being can give to another is to listen to someone else even when you greatly disagree with them. Listen to them first. You actually might find some common denominators. You know, this country is actually more unified than perhaps in many, many years. I heard a statistic, 98% of all people think violence and racism is bad. That's a phenomenal statement. 98% of people asked are in 100%, you know, are in 98% agreement that racism and violence are bad. That's a unifying statement. Now let's be unified on the response as we care and love for all people. And so I'm very sympathetic to law enforcement because I used to be a, a you know, an assistant solicitor, a prosecutor. My father-in-law was a police officer. My brother-in-law was a police officer. I have a cousin who shares, who's on the sheriff's department here. I, I, you see, we need to be careful that we love all of God's children, but we also hold all of God's children to that higher standard. And that is to love God completely and totally, We're back to our gospel, and to love our neighbors ourselves. It goes a long way toward answering and giving the solution. But listen, that's what I've been trying to do. Well, let us now continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us together pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Now as we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Today is an ember day, the last of these three ember days of summer that follow immediately after Pentecost. So we will pray the Ember Day prayer, uh, as well as the prayer of the day. Um, Almighty God, the giver of all good gifts, in your divine providence you have appointed various orders in your church. Give your grace, we humbly pray, to all who are called to any office and ministry before your people, and so fill them with the truth of your doctrine, and clothe them with holiness of life, that they may faithfully serve before you. To the glory of your great name and for the benefit of your holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Colic of the Day for Saturday, the uh, fourth, uh, pro the proper, uh, proper four. O God, the protector of all those who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now the colic for Sabbath rest, for Saturdays. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be truly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. The third prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you for the knowledge and love of you or for the honor of your name. Amen. This time, I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings, and certainly invite you to remember that men and women, perhaps even in your own families, uh, who served uh, as part of the greatest generation during World War II on this 76th anniversary of uh, D-Day. Debbie's uncle, Carol, was one of those survivors who was also wounded. Uh, he was on the ground, uh, on the beaches of Normandy, as part of that Norman invasion, the first wave, and uh, through God's grace, he survived Why, while well, men all around him uh, died. My father was in the air flying, uh, well, he was, he was the aerial engineer on the C-47, the McDonnell Douglas aircraft that carried um, paratroopers, supplies, and towed gliders as part of the D-Day uh, and part of the effort of the European theater for victory. Um, our Uncle Perry who died, uh, again there are so many, uh, Uncle Charlie that I can think of. So remember your loved ones and even those that we don't know that perhaps there's no one alive today to remember them, lift them up to the Lord. And of course remember those who are in harm's way with Tropical Storm Crystal Ball. and. Uh, Please pray for them also. And for an end to violence and racism, racism in our country, and for reconciliation. 
and thanksgiving for those who serve and protect our country. The majority who are wonderful men and women who are doing their best in these very difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me with a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lives, but not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let each and every one of us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I remind you, today being Saturday from 12 to 2, those who would like to receive the reserved sacrament, uh, please come by Church of the Holy Cross. Walter will distribute the reserved sacrament for you. And then as you join in with worship, either live on Facebook at 10 tomorrow, or live in person, because the church is now, well, it never was closed. Of course, you know the church is the people, but the facilities, the buildings were closed. Well, now they've been reopened, and we practice safe so social distancing. So you're invited to come tomorrow, bring your face mask, follow the directions of our ushers uh, for your safety and the safety of others. Uh, but we are worshiping live together. And then, of course, uh, the service is recorded. And so, in any event, if you pick up the reserved sacrament today, either watching it live tomorrow or one of the recorded portions, you can then receive the reserved sacrament at the time that you would otherwise receive communion. And so that option remains available to you. And then, of course, we know that there are people watching from all around the world. I, I get so blessed. Almost every day I get an, an, an email, a message from uh, recently from Kenya, where a pastor is praying for us, praying for Holy Cross, praying for our nation. And I get messages almost on a daily basis from all around the world who, who want to know how are things in the United States, how are, how are we doing, and, and praying for us. And of course, we remember them in our prayers. We have our relationship uh, uh, also and, and with, uh, with the Diocese of uh, Masindi Katira and Bishop George. And so we just remember we're part of this global Christian communion. And then we pray for those who are not yet members. That the Holy Spirit will use us to help them hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is the healer and redeemer from sin, not only ours, but for all who will hear and call upon him. Have a blessed day, and I look forward to worshiping with you for the Eucharist tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye. <laughs>